and welcome back to the Reapers. So today we're in the SU-27 and we're going to talk about navigation. This is general navigation uh, between waypoints and air bases, but excluding actual landing. Um, now this is going to encompass not only the MiG-20, uh, sorry, not just the SU-27, but also the MiG-29, the three MiG-29 variants and the SU-33. Basically all of the navigation systems in those planes are identical or similar enough to be included in uh, in this tutorial so first of all as ever let's just look at the keys or the commands that we're going to be using in this so go here so uh, the one key and its navigation modes there we're going to be using uh, also we're going to want previous waypoint we're going to want next waypoint we're going to want display zoom in and display zoom out uh, we can do it with just with that now this is uh, an, a flaming cliffs three plane so it's a pretty simple model a simplified model so all of this stuff isn't interactive we don't have to type different uh, codes in and stuff like that it's all done with the keyboard and made super simple and fun and uh, bloody good training as well so let's have a look at today's plan so here we are here's our su-27 we're about uh, 40 miles south uh, east of now check if i click on us you can see our waypoint plan now uh, these are waypoints. Point one is a waypoint, point two is a waypoint, point three is a waypoint. They were set um, basically on the ground. So what we've got here is an INS, an inertial navigation system. This is a navigation system that's built within the plane and it's set up, the waypoints are added to it, if you like, while, while it's on the ground. In DCS, we do that by adding these waypoints in the mission editor. So I've added points one, two, and three. These are three-dimensional points. So they have, uh, if you like, an X and a Y, and they also have a Z, that's an outer altitude um, so um, uh, waypoint one two and three I put all different altitudes I forget what they are at the moment but we'll see as we navigate through them so those are the waypoints and we're gonna be able to select them navigate to them switch between them um, but also important in this are the course lines the course lines are what join the waypoints up and these are the yellow dotted lines um, and we will be flying uh, to the course line and showing how we can fly along that course line and uh, how not to do it. If we jump back in the cockpit we can start looking at the tools, the instruments we're going to be using. First of all um, there is the HUD, if I press left O and C I'll get my cursor up here, we've got the HUD, uh, this does uh, most of the navigation if you like, uh, there's several instruments that do navigation and um, that a lot of them overlap, their function overlaps, but they also uh, serve as backup. So, for instance, if your HUD gets knocked out, which is very possible in combat or just general failures, you can switch to the other instruments. So, what the HUD here will be using and various um, items on that HUD. The ADI, the artificial horizon, with the uh, two guidelines, the uh, horizontal uh, drift line here and the vertical line here. And we've got the HSI, the Horizontal Situation Indicator. We've got the, um, if you like, the clock around the outside, the uh, in degrees. Uh, we've got our heading line and heading pointer, which is kind of a greeny um, or a yellow uh, pointer, roughly where my cursor is there. You'll see that when it deviates from the 12 o'clock position. We've got the course line indicator, which is this chap here, the white double lines and the back of it, the white double lines there. And you've got the back of the heading indicator there in the kind of greeny color. We've got the distance to shown there to the current waypoint there. Um, and we've got our display here. So we're going to be using it as a map display, if you like, and this will uh, sh uh, allow us to zoom in and out and find, look at the different waypoints. Okay. So um, let's quickly talk about the hard. In fact, before we do that, we can set the hard in various modes. So first of all, we're going to unpause. We're going to put it in BVR mode. So just imagine we've been doing some missile fighting. What we want to do then is to get into navigation mode. So we're going to press 1. Um, and we come up with the first navigation mode, ENR, on the route mode. On route mode is the basic navigation we're going to be using to, um, to locate waypoints and fly between our waypoints. If we press 1 again, we get RTN, return. This takes us to a base. Basically, if we want to navigate to a base, this will take us to a base. It doesn't take us to the actual final runway. It doesn't guide us in like an ILS system. It just takes us to a base, I think a place about 10 miles um, off of the end of the runway. Okay, that's that. And landing, uh, LN, LDNG, if I press one again, landing, and that will take us down actually to a, uh, actually take us down to a landing, an ILS landing. Today we're going to look at, at the first two, e, uh, en route and, and return. Okay, so we just need to explore the instruments a little bit more. So I'm going to set en route. There we go. 
Uh, so first of all, we've got our first waypoints selected. So just to prove that we've got our first waypoint selected, uh, we haven't actually. We've got waypoint zero selected. So I'm looking down in this. Why don't we start with this display here? Actually, I'm going to unpause and I'm going to display zoom in and out. So I'm using the, the plus and minus keys to uh, zoom in and out, and you'll have to set that accordingly in your controls and we can see that this one is highlighted here waypoint zero that's where we originated from we don't want that we want to fly to number one so the first thing we're going to do is cycle through that waypoint now if you remember we looked at the controls earlier we're going to use the next waypoint key so let me do that and you can see now that uh, waypoint one is selected so that's where we're going to be heading to so let's look at the HUD and uh, the various informations we've got here there is our actual airspeed at the moment, 430. Up here is the desired way, the desired airspeed that we should should be doing um, as we stand, as it stands. Uh, bearing in mind what the waypoints are programmed with. So the waypoints are programmed with not only a location, but with a desired speed, and that would be our desired speed at this moment. Next, there is our altitude there, 1900 meters, and there is our desired altitude as set by the waypoint. So this waypoint one is set at 3048 meters, okay? Next is our, our course guide here. So we've got a circle here, and, um, and the name of the game with this circle is that we want to position it so our aircraft, um, our aircraft pointing position, so where our aircraft is pointing, sorry I've forgotten the proper name, this cross here basically, we want to maneuver our plane so that this cross basically fits in the circle and then if you like we can chase that circle and it will give us real-time updates to, um, to follow the waypoint, not only to follow the waypoint but also to stay on our course line, if you remember the dotted line we see here, it's important that we stay on that course line. Um, so we'll show doing that a little bit later. Um, also, it shows that we're on in ro on route mode there. Also, it shows the distance from us currently to the selected waypoint, waypoint one, 14.6 kilometers. So that's a bunch of HUD information that we've got to get to waypoint one. Now let's look at the steam gauges. If we couldn't use the HUD for whatever reason, or we didn't want to use the HUD, we'd go to the steam gauges. So first of all, we've got the ADI artificial horizon. We've got two guidelines, a lateral guideline, which this is this up and down line here. Uh, this is going to guide us um, to not only the waypoint that we want to get to, but also to get us on the all-important course. So um, if you can see it's a bit hard. We're overlapping the course at the moment, but that course line is shown here. If we were far out to the side of the course line, it would be obvious we were off the course line. And this ADI will guide us onto that course line. So basically, I like to call them chase lines. So if this yellow line was left here to us, we are in the center there, we would have to chase it left and slowly that line would get to the center and we would not want to hold it in the center. Same with thing with a vertical line, uh, uh, commonly called a glide slope line. In this case, uh, there's not a glide slope, it's just general navigation. So we've just got a vertical um, uh, uh, line here. Again, I like to call it a chase line. It's at the top at the moment, above us, which means we've got to chase it upwards. It's trying to guide us upwards, basically. And when we get on the correct slope up to the waypoint, this will head down to us and we want to keep it basically on us. So we want to keep both of these yellow lines crossed on us in the center there and then we're heading to that waypoint correctly. So we'll have a look at that in a bit. And thirdly, we've got the HSI, another way of getting to the waypoint. Uh, now the HSI horizontal situation indicator, uh, the clue is in the title, it's horizontal only. It does not deal with the Z third axis. Uh, but we do have some information here that the ADI haven't does not have. We have here the um, uh, the distance to the selected waypoint, 14 and a half kilometers. We've got um, the heading um, we want to go to to get to the uh, waypoint, which is a little green marker in there, hard to see at the moment because it's been overlapped by the course um, indicator. This white one is the course indicator as we spoke to about. Now as long as the course indicator and the heading indicator are overlapping each other, that means we are basically um, that's good. That means we are on the course line, okay? And if the course indicator and the heading indicator are uh, at the 12 o'clock position, so exactly where my cursor is there, then we are on the course line and we are heading towards the waypoint. Uh, so I hope that makes sense. So the name of the game basically is to get the course indicator, the heading indicator, all lined up with this here, the 12 o'clock position. If we do that, then we're on course and we're on heading, okay? That shows us our instruments. So uh, let's fly to this point uh, correctly. Then the next waypoint, we'll fly to it incorrectly to show you how we can deviate from the course. And then we'll finish the circuit at waypoint three. Uh, so let's get going. 
So we want to start using our instruments. So um, first of all, just to show you, I'm going to start using the uh, the circle in the HUD there. So I'm going to position it within the uh, sorry. I'm going to position my cross within that circle. So I'm pulling back on the stick. I'm going to add a bit of speed. As you can see, my speed is too low. I want to increase it up to 550. And you can see I'm heading towards that um, uh, circle now. So it's happy that I'm on the correct uh, course and heading to that waypoint. Um, now, uh, just to quickly correct something I said earlier, uh, so we can see that this um, horizontal line is in the correct position. This line here is not in the correct position. Uh, that's because I thought it showed me the correct glide slope. Apparently it doesn't. Apparently it shows me the absolute um, altitude I want to be at at, where, at that waypoint. So when I get to the absolute waypoint height, which is 3048, I believe this line here is going to come down and meet us there. So we'll see how that goes. And everything is beautifully lined up, as you can see here, 12 o'clock, uh, waypoint line, uh, sorry, waypoint heading and course indicator. Okay, so let's keep going, make this one nice and easy. And you can see on our ADI, that line is coming down now. So we're going to level out when that line, and we've just overshot it because I'm not a very good driver. So I've overshot it, so now everything's going to start correcting. And here's where we get a little bit wobbly. So I'm using now the ADI and that yellow, cr uh, yellow cross. I'm chasing the yellow cross just a little bit, and I'm pretty happy I've got that centered. Now I check the HUD, and you can see I'm, I'm okay within that circle. I'm out a little bit now, so I've got to chase it down a little bit. And I can also be using these absolute numbers up here. So I'm still slightly above the um, the uh, desired altitude. So let's head down just a bit. I'm too far, so I'm coming off the gas. Now check out our distance. Our distance is 0.5 kilometers. We're about to hit that waypoint. When we do, um, it's going to automatically select the next waypoint. I should, sh and I'll show that happening now. Whoops. There, it's changed to waypoint two. We can prove that because we can look in here. And, um, and see that waypoint two is now selected. Um, so I'm gonna turn to waypoint two. Right, so things to point out now. Um, with waypoint two, it desires a current speed of 530, as I said. It does the, heading, uh, the waypoint is set at 2,133 meters, so it's gonna ask us to turn left and down. Now, the interesting thing is, if you look between uh, waypoint one and two, or oh, I should say, sorry, before I do this, I just want to quickly show that you can cycle between all of the waypoints. So uh, let me just unpause for a second. I'm just going to put the brakes out to slow down. I'm going to zoom out on the display. And if I press the next waypoint and previous waypoint, you see how I can go between all of them like that. Uh, so that shows how I can do that. And there'll be a similar thing when we're selecting air bases in a bit. So let's get to number two. Okay. Uh, you can see our ADI has gone crazy. It says, it says, for God's sake, get down low and turn left sharply. You can see our horizontal situation indicator is, um, is telling us to turn to this heading here. So we've got to essentially chase this green marker here. And you can see, interestingly, now how the course um, indicator has deviated from the heading, indi heading indicator. The reason for that is if we look on here, zoom in a little bit. You can see but that's the course between one and two, and we're gone wrong we're all the way up here we're completely off course so what we've got to do now is basically maneuver now so that we get this course indicator back in line with the waypoint heading indicator and then get all of that up to the 12 o'clock position okay so what we're going to do we're going to this is going to be an extreme example of it obviously obviously but i'm just trying to get the point through, across so to do that i'm going to basically turn this direction head this direction like this until we intercept this course line here and you'll see what happens so let's unpause that Let's put some power on and make an extreme course correction. It's really useful. Ah, oh, I should mention in the MiG-29 it doesn't have this uh, uh, the map display, unfortunately. So you just have to make do with your HSI and whatnot. But um, the map screen is really just um, a luxury. You don't you don't need it. It just makes making videos easier. You, it's not something you actually need. Okay. So this is all very extreme of what I'm doing, obviously, but I'm trying to make the video as short as possible and fit as much info as I can. So now we're heading towards, back towards that course. And as we do that, what we're going to see is the course indicator here start to marry up with heading indicator for waypoint two here. So that will marry up with that. And then what we're going to do is make a turn uh, when they're relatively close back towards waypoint two. And we're going to try and marry these, that, that, and that up. And that is going to get us on the course and the heading to the waypoint. So going to start turning now quite a sharp turn so put some power on marrying up pretty nicely turn a little bit sharper keep coming and pion and 
Uh, let's pause that there. Uh, first things, I was looking accidentally looking at the back of the needle before. I was looking at that, but it doesn't. It's not too important. Um, um, this is the front of the needle. This, these are the side trees we'll be chasing. So I've got the course indicator uh, at 12 o'clock, but I haven't got the waypoint indicator at 12 o'clock. It was a lazy turn that I made, and correspondingly, you can see I'm off course. But the, get the idea of, of what I'm trying to do. What we'll do is a slightly less extreme version on the next waypoint, so you can see that. So I better concentrate on trying to get to the waypoint now, and this is going to be extreme because they're extremely close waypoints. So I'm going to use my hard circle just to get down. I've got to get down real quick. I've got two kilometers to get all the way down there. So I can make that waypoint intersection and pulling up. Whee! Gone too far down. About to hit the waypoint. And we've hit it. And we're now on to waypoint three, you can see there. So let's do another turn and let's try doing the HSI trick again. Let me turn my lights on. Uh, set, um, let's make, not make it quite as extreme. So what we can see now, we're going to pause that there. What we can see now, this is the front of the needle. So the waypoint uh, uh, indicator is there. Heading, uh, sorry, the waypoint heading indicated there. The course line indicated there. So we've got to marry these two up and get them in the centre within uh, 13 kilometres. Uh, so let's get that done as well. Look at the out desired altitude at the top right of the HUD, 609 metres. We've got to be heading down as well. So let's try and get these two married up, shall we? So we're going to have to do a quite another big correction. So trying to watch that HSI. Watch that HSI. My air brake on, yes, it is. Okay, now I'm purposefully going heading left of the course now to try and bring that course line indicator in towards the uh, waypoint heading indicator. You can see they're getting pretty close, so we're preparing to make our turn. I'm going to start making our turn now, see if we get this a little bit better than the last time. We're going to drag them into the center in the 12 o'clock position, and that is going to be not too bad. So that's just level off there. So you can see how we've um, used this course indicator and the waypoint heading indicator to get more or less um, at the 12 o'clock position. I know it's not perfect, but with the time we've got, that's put us on course and to the heading on the waypoint. And we can prove it by looking on our display here. We're back on the course line. We're back to the uh, back heading towards the waypoint. Right, uh, next, uh, we've just got to make this waypoint in time. We're 7.6 clicks away, as you can see, and it's way down in the mud, uh, down to 600 meters, you can see. So we've got to, we're just going to chase, uh, to make it easy, we're going to chase our waypoint circle, which we're doing now. Cross in the center of the circle. Watch your altitude. We're on course, we're on heading. So with the HUD, you don't really need these tools down here, but they are useful to know. You will, whoops, sorry, talking. You will be using those instruments at some point in your DCS lives, I can guarantee it. Okay. So we're up at the correct altitude now, or near us. We're just going to um, get a little bit higher. And boom, hit the waypoint. Beautiful. Right, uh, now we've reached the end of our waypoint series, waypoint three, it's deciding what we probably want to do is, is RTN, return to a base, and it's absolutely correct, we are going to return to a base. Uh, it's um, so we can tell because it's got RTN mode and we've got all the usual informations as before. So this isn't a waypoint I've selected in, this is a pre-programmed base, if you like, waypoint. Um, but I haven't had to add, it, add in mission editor, there's one of these for each airfield approach basically, okay? It's, and it's got the same information. We've got a distance to it there. We've got a circle to chase there. We've got a desired speed there. We've got a desired altitude there. Uh, if we want to look on our map just to visualize it, we can do that. We've got a HSI. We've got an ADI. Everything's there to do the same stuff. So I won't fly all the way because it's going to take too long. But let me just uh, prove to you that you can see there. Let me try and pause that up. So ignore the 0, 1, 2, and 3. What it's looking for is it's taking to the approach of this airport here. Okay, and it doesn't tell me which airport it is, but I'll know by having a map, or, you know, on my lap or whatever, what it is. Um, and, and that's it, really. Um, now, we can cycle through airports. Um, so let me unpause. We're going to use the next and previous waypoint. Um, now, what you'll see, so we've chosen another one that's 500 clicks away. Now, uh, it cycles through them randomly, I think, or in alphabetical order, I'm not sure. Um, so you just have to essentially cycle through them all until uh, an airport of relevance uh, uh, appears. So let's keep cycling through them until an airfield of relevance, i.e. one of these two, appears. There, and that shows in that one. Or we could do it again, and this time we've got that one uh, right off our nose there. In fact, why don't we fly to it, because it's so bloody close. 
Um, and we can see exactly where it puts us. So, we're going to turn. We're going to chase it. Chase our circle. We're, uh, we are 14 kilometers away. It wants us up at 2,000 uh, meters, you can see. We're just going to chase our circle, chase our HSI, chase our, chase our ADI. Up we go. Oopsie. Uh, it's, you can see uh, it's updating in real time the speed and uh, distance, uh, sorry, altitude that it wants. So it, it originally chose 2,000, and then we've reached that. Now it wants us to go down to 1,400 and 310. Uh, so we would do that. I don't, I'm not going to take this too far because it's not. To, uh, we're not trying to show the landing, but let's just um, show the concept. We've got nine kilometres to go. Uh, level out there. All the movements I'm doing are super extreme. That's just because I've got to get this video done as quickly as possible. You'd take it a lot easier, obviously. Um, that was slightly below where we want to go now. Heading up. Checking HSI. Heading is good. to see where we are that we're about to hit our point look you can see that square box and it wants us at uh, 1430 so we're going to get up there it wants us slower still so we're going to keep slowing down and let's see where it takes us once we've got here two clicks I suspect it's going to turn us uh, set us to landing mode and we've hit it and you can see uh, now it's we've reached this point here 10 miles or so away from the runway and now it's changed to landing and that's going to guide us in for an instrument landing okay we're going to do that in a separate video just to make things a little simpler and simpler and less uh, uh, hashed together um, so that's navigation I hope that helps and I'll see you